My name is Charlie Ray. I'm a forester working in northern Wisconsin, largely in Bayfield County. That's in the northern tip of the state, surrounded by Lake Superior. We've got a landscape that's dominated by a lot of what you see behind me here, an aspen forest, which is uh, early successional uh, forest type that's come in after the historic uh, cutover of the white pine and northern hardwoods that used to dominate this landscape. Uh, with the project funded through SARE, uh, I've been working with private landowners to put in some study plots looking at alternatives to clear-cutting aspen. Uh, in particular, the question about whether you can thin an aspen forest and create a climate that is uh, uh, productive for the next generation of a different forest cover type. We're looking at oak, we're looking at white pine as uh, alternative cover types to the aspen. And the question is, uh, how does it affect the landowner's income in the short run and uh, in the long run? And uh, what do you, uh, uh, what would be the proper prescription for a harvest in order to meet uh, the goal of transitioning these aspen-dominated forests to a longer-lived, more diverse uh, forest that would provide uh, multiple income streams over the long term for landowners. Uh, a lot of private landowners, um, as well as uh, you know, citizens uh, concerned about how the public lands are managed, um, uh, have a aversion to completely clear-cutting the landscape um, and have an interest in multiple uh, goals and uses for the land, uh, habitat goals, uh, recreational goals, um, and income goals as well. Um, when you clear-cut these landscapes, you regenerate uh, a uniform age class of species and oftentimes uh, only one or two species. Um, so you're typically limiting your options down the road for harvest. You know, you're not going to be harvesting anything on that site for another 50 years. Uh, so a lot of landowners, um, you know, they look at their land. How long does a person live? How long are they going to enjoy their land? A lot of people would rather just let their trees fall down and die than have to stomach a complete clear cut of their land and wait 30 years before they have a forest to walk through again. So this provides people an alternative uh, to maybe generate some income and maybe even uh, speed up the succession of the forest to um, longer lived and more diverse uh, uh, species. A lot of people are thinking about the next generation and what kind of legacy they're leaving for their children or on the public lands, you know, what is the legacy for our communities? And if you leave a legacy of one species that you have to harvest in, you know, in 50 years and you don't have any other options for that time, you know, that's a lot different uh, legacy than a mixed forest in which a person might be able to come in in 20 years and then again in 40 years and then again in 60 years and perpetually have a small income stream and be generating a diversity of products. Uh, most of this aspen forest type is um, harvested for pulpwood up here. Um, it goes into you know uh, a range of low quality to higher quality paper products. Um, some of the aspen does reach a size that it can uh, make uh, plywood and uh, um, a wood pro a higher value wood products. Um, but it, the aspen forest generally is not providing you know veneer wood, um, high, that, that's the highest value woods and, um, and structural timbers and other things that you know you get with pine, oak, northern hardwoods and the mixed forest. So the spot we're standing in is one of the plots that we have on this landowner's property and you can see blue marks on the sides of me. These are all trees that were tallied um, and on this tally sheet where we're, we're measuring um, the DBH, the merchantable height and the total height of all of these trees. And the idea is we'll be able to return in another decade and determine whether we had an increase or decrease in the volume of the wood and um, what and then we're also looking at the understory and what sort of uh, uh, what the component is of the next forest that's coming in here. So with with forestry, of course, uh, we're growing species that we want to harvest in 60, 80, 100, 150, 
plus years. So uh, we don't necessarily know what the results are of our project on the typical agricultural uh, cycle. So the SARE uh, project has been helpful in that regard in that we, we started this project on one landowner's property, implemented a harvest, and we took data points before and after the harvest, and then came back to SARE uh, six years later, and we're able to collect another round of data points as well as adding this, this property um, to the study so that we have um, yet another uh, set of data. And we hope to come back to this uh, site in another five or 10 years, as well as the other uh, property where we started, because we really don't feel like um, we've got enough plots in to get all the answers at all. And, and we think it's gonna be a good 20 years before things sort themselves out um, and we really find what the results were of our of our harvest.